guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are picking up where we left off with the i20N. The last time on the channel we installed the LP power module which proved to have some great gains. Today we are going to be actually modifying the ECU data so that we'll get even more control to create hopefully even more power. So let's go and take a look at this car in comparison to the other one that we had in. So what I can already see with this car in particular that's totally different from the last one is we've got an AirTech intake. I can also see down the back, you might not be able to see it right now, but down the back in here is a massive forge blow off valve and we've also got some exhaust modifications. We also have an intercooler on this particular car as well as a big air intake scoop. So there is quite a lot more done to this one than the last car. What I'm going to have to start by doing is just checking all the fluid levels and stuff like that. I know the coolant bottle looks like it's not got anything in it, but it actually does. If you shine a little light through it, you'll be able to see that there is actually coolant inside this. It's just very, very difficult to tell with this particular bottle, but we know there is coolant there. All I need to do now is check the oil, get the car strapped down, and then we can start making some progress with this. Last time, I'd done a one hit wonder and it was all right, we made some extra power, but we didn't make any extra torque. This time I'm hoping to refine all that software and actually get it to where I want it to be, making some good torque figures, hopefully more than the tuning module, and making some nice horsepower figures as well. To be honest, the tuning module actually made quite good power, and to be honest, for most people that's going to be more than enough. However, it would be nice just to have that little bit extra, and also having more control over the ECU as a whole is quite nice. The only particular downside with this car is that I can't tune it through the OBD at this point in time. We're hoping that we'll be able to do it at some point, but you just never know. It depends if tuning tool manufacturers actually release those types of protocols. What we're going to be doing is doing a bench read, so pinning out directly onto the ECU pins, taking a read that way and putting our files in that way. So it means there's going to be a lot of stopping and starting. It's going to be quite time consuming. Hopefully we're going to be able to make some good power within a couple of revisions and then it's just a case of trying to refine it. I think this is going to work out quite well. I'm hoping that we're going to see some nice figures. But let's get cracking. What I'm going to have to do with this particular car is do a standard run with it because it's got so many modifications on it there is a chance that it's going to be higher than it should be so we'll get this ran up see what it's doing first that gives us a baseline to work with even though i've got the run from the last car things can change from car to car and there is a little bit of a tolerance level one thing i have noticed with these wee cars whenever you start them up they're always really really loud on startup i know this one's getting aftermarket exhaust so that'll change things a little bit but it is particularly loud Tell you what I do really like about this car, I really like the fact that it's got a decent gauge for the oil temp and the engine temp that isn't like covered by anything. Also, the owner has gave us it with a full tank of fuel. For stuff like this, that is fantastic because there is nothing worse than getting a car in for development and there's no fuel in it, it's an absolute pain. That and another pet peeve is if I go into your OBD compartment and there's hundreds of change in it and I need to drop the full thing and pick up all your change. So don't do that, it's a bad idea, I don't like it. What I basically need to do for my dyno is teach it the RPM so it knows where 2000 RPM is and that's the way it can work out the rest of the RPM and the run. Um, it's quite good because it's quite quick, I don't need to plug all things in and stuff like that. I can run it directly off the OBD but the problem with doing that is it means I can't then run my logger so I prefer just to you know, have the two things totally independent. Okay, so let's do our first run then, shall we? Seems alright. Not too bad. The logs are a bit funky though, I would say. The ignition, the way it goes, is a bit strange. Doesn't run a lot of boost the car, that's one thing I'm noticing. But to be honest, a lot of cars don't really run a lot of boost, it just depends on the particular setup of that car. 198 horsepower, 312 newton meters. First impressions of that run, I can see a couple of things that are a bit strange, the way the ignition goes and stuff like that. If we can get that up a bit, that's gonna make a difference, but we also need to get a little bit extra boost in there. What I'm gonna go and do now is start setting up for a bench read while I go through all this stuff as well. And then we can make a couple of changes to the ECU, see if we can just even lift the torque up. We'll try and start in the torque zone first before getting into going crazy with the top end and stuff like that. We'll try and just lift up that bottom end and mid-range just a little bit. The way the car pulls, just judging by the graph, 
is that it pulls quite strong into the mid range and then flattens off up the top. It doesn't really go that much. So having that little bit extra up the top end is going to be quite nice. I want to basically try and change the driving characteristics of the car when it's on full power. It would be nice to have a nice pull all the way to the top end. It just depends when this turbo is going to start running out a puff. Well, there's only one way to find out. This right here is the part that we need into it, so all we're going to need to do is actually take this off and this off, and then we should be good to go. We'll just get the pins on it, and that'll be us ready to take an actual read of the ECU. Right, now we've got all this done, so what I'm going to do is take a read of it. So I've started that process now, and once I've done that, I'm just going to leave this plugged in there for the time being. I'll just unplug the power supply. I'll write the map file, that way I don't need to go do all this again. I'm going to base it off the one that I've done before, but make a few changes so hopefully I can lift the bottom end up ever so slightly. The thing about this ECU is that it's quite similar to a Fiesta ST180, but it's not identical, so there's still a lot of things that are in totally different areas to what you know maybe a Fiesta ST would be. Um, it's actually a totally different ECU as well, but the actual structure itself is quite similar. But I think there's things missing from this definition file I've got, which isn't ideal. I'm just going to have to try and work with it to try and find everything that I need to find. I've made a couple of changes over the last file that I put on one of these, so hopefully that's going to be enough to give us the extra torque and stuff like that that we're looking for. So what I'm going to do now is basically just finish off a couple of little bits and then flash onto the car, make sure it starts, and then we'll run it again and see how much power we're making. There's every chance it could just go into lip mode. This is just one of those things. We've now got the file on. ECU's all plugged back in. Now for the moment of truth, let's go and see if it starts. This is all good, no doubt it's going to be one of the world's loudest startups. Ah, doesn't want to work. That might be battery level though. So we'll stabilise the battery. We'll see if it will start, but maybe not. It might be tune problem. In fact, I know what I'll do to check the battery voltage, I'll just plug into the OBD and that should be able to tell me roughly if the battery voltage is okay. If not, we're going to need to revisit that file again and maybe change another couple of things because clearly it didn't like something I've changed. To me, it sounds like it's bricked. It doesn't want to start, I don't think, so I'll try. Nah, definitely bricked. Definitely bricked. Oh God, I dropped my CMD. Ah! <gasps> This is not what I wanted, but this is why I booked this car in for a couple of days. So now as a test, what I'm going to have to do is basically put the file, the standard file back on it and then try again. I've flashed this car successfully before, but that time I made quite a lot of changes, so clearly it didn't like whatever I'd done. I'll need to work out exactly what that was and then try and change it again. Thankfully, I have successfully recovered the car. It all starts now, which is fine. I just need to work out what changes it was that the car didn't particularly like and then I can try and do what I need to do round about those changes and not do them. I think I know what parts it was that I changed and I've already undone them so I'm going to go and try again and see if it works this time. It's quite hard to give a concept of time in these videos and I know that but right now it's just after 3 o'clock and I am nowhere near as far in as I wanted to be. This is just one of these things, unfortunately, when it comes to stock ECU tuning. We don't have an exact, this is what controls this, this is what controls this, and this is how the ECU is going to respond if you change these things. Sometimes it's just trial and error. I'd have been a lot further forward if it hadn't bricked. But it did, so that's it. Right, moment of truth. <laughs> moment of truth number two. No, it still doesn't like it. Hmm. Well, back to the drawing board that is. Oh, I hate when it does this. Right, well, let's see if I'm third time lucky. Oh, this is the problem. We're doing this sort of work. It's easy if people are just making it for you, but it's no easy when you've got to make it yourself and fix it yourself. Let's pray. Still? What is going on? <laughs> what have I done differently this time? I just don't know. I just don't know at this point. Hmm, that's really annoying. Oh well. Back to the drawing board. Again. 
See, the annoying part is I've already done one of these. I've already flashed one. So why is it still being an absolute pain? It could, it could be something as simple as just one digit. That's all that could be that's upsetting this. And it's crazy how that much can really affect something, but it can. It's just that easy. Well, I can, I'm can. i going to look back at the, the version 1 that I've already done before um, and see if it's any different to what I've... Mm, actually. You know what? Let's try this. This will now be the fourth revision in, just trying to get the car to start after the changes I've made. And I thought a lot of these things would have been absolutely fine, but it seems not. Um, I think I've been barking up the wrong tree in what I thought was the problem, but I think I've worked out exactly what the problem is now, because if it wasn't for the fact that I had one of these working before, I'd have been really puzzled, but that's the good thing about not changing too much. Because if you do, that's when the problems start, because you can't work out what you've done. I know they usually say third time's the charm, but maybe it's going to be fourth time for me. Oh, it would be fourth time if I actually brought the key. Right, so I've made a fair couple of changes, and I think this is going to do it. Pray for me. Yes! <laughs> Finally! So that was a very particularly small set of tables that were giving us all that problem. Hopefully, what I've changed isn't going to upset anything too much. I'm hoping to still go in here and see even a little, little bit extra torque or something. But I know that I need to go back and change another few tables to be able to try and maybe move that up or down. Um, but first things first, we're, we're running now, so that's good. Now, I might not even complete a full run with this. I might just get to a certain point and step off. Um, just when I see where we're kind of going. We might see some gains, we might not. I'm going to keep my eye closely on the logs just to see how much the car's actually producing on here. Um, what it makes up there, I'll worry about that afterwards, but I mainly want to be making sure that the ignition and stuff like that is stable and that we're not getting any big crazy dips or we're not running too much boost or anything like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically just make sure we're at a, a reasonable level for now and then I can start building my way up. So we've made a lot more power, but the dyno has actually freaked out, and that is because of the noise that the dyno computer has actually turned off and turned back on again. <laughs> it looked like we were onto a winner as well, because up the top end it had increased quite a bit. I don't know exactly how much it increased by, but it definitely went up. So I'm hoping that I can do a bit of changing here now and put it on and see if it's going to lift up the bottom end a little bit. So even though that run wasn't entirely successful as far as like getting a power graph out it goes, we still got enough there out the logs to actually further our tune. What I've done this time is I've placed a massive bit of foam over at the dyno computer to try and act as like a sound barrier. I've also opened up the door behind me, that way that it doesn't echo too much inside the room. Um, from what I understand, it's to do with the disc inside this particular computer. Apparently it wobbles it and that's enough to trip the dyno computer out if it's a certain frequency of sound. Not ideal, but in all honesty it's about the only problem I've really ever had with this dyno. I've had this problem a couple of times and that's what I've been told it is. What we've done now is we've tried to liven up the bottom end a little bit. The top end, the ignition looked like it was retarding out but it, it wasn't, it was just following the actual commands for where the load was so I've tried to do some stuff with that as well to try and sort it out a bit. Um, hopefully this run we're going to see it a little bit more. I, again, I'm still trying not to go too crazy with it because we want to take kind of gradual steps, um, but we'll see where this kind of takes us now. Hopefully it's going to give us exactly what we're looking for, a bit more torque, a bit more top end, and hopefully a nice enough graph that's slightly different to the standard one. better, that was a lot better, we had more torque, we had a lot more power as well, so that's a good start, we're getting there, we're actually starting to get somewhere now. Wicked, so we're making round about the same torque as what the box made, I still think we can do slightly better than that, top end wise we're not quite there yet, but I know why that is and I think that we can do slightly better again, 
It's just going to be a little bit of trial and error now, but we're moving in the right direction. We now officially have some upgraded figures from the stage one, so that's the first big step. Well, we're back on the car again. We're just about to apply version four. Now, I know it sounds like I've only done four versions, but I've not. There was version two, A, B, C, D, all the way to E. So that was actually quite a few versions, and that was all just to try and make it not brick itself. But we're now making progress. We're nearly where we need to be. I'd like to just see a little bit more boost at the top end. I think that's going to give us the figures that we're looking for. And then all that's left to do is actually test drive the car and make sure it's all good. We're just about to pull off all the pinouts now, get the ECU all hooked back up, and then see how much power it makes. I'm praying that this is going to make 235 and above. That is all I'm aiming for for the stage one. There's another file going on now. Well, I've finally done it. I've completed the tune. As you can see, this is probably like my third or fourth costume change. This has taken a lot longer than what I thought, but I wanted to try and make sure it was as good as I could possibly make it. So I had to just keep doing this in between jobs and, you know, put as much time and effort into it as possible. But we have got to where we want to be. So we are now over 230 horsepower. The highest we've ran is 236 with 400 Newton meters. So that is a really, really big gain. Um, quite happy with that for, you know, the fact it's stage one. It is quite a small turbo in these, so it will fall off to an extent up the top end. That's always going to be the case. Um, but everything's looking good. Um, all the temps all look good. Everything is, you know, really, really good as far as all that's concerned. So I'm really happy with that. How does it compared to the likes of the box build for a start we've got more torque in mid-range we've just got more control and that's just natural so of course you're going to make that little bit more um, I think if this had more modifications on it then it would do even better it has got quite a few on it um, some things I would maybe change and maybe do differently but either way it's still producing now what we wanted it to produce it's took a lot longer but I'm glad we're finally there now well, we hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and comment down below on what you want to see in the channel. And of course, make sure to subscribe. So we'll see you in the next one.